Hi! In this bite-sized tutorial, we'll learn how to prepare data for Vertex AI. Make sure you have created a project and enable the Vertex AI Data API. You can enable the Vertex Data API by going typing Vertex AI in the search bar, going into the service and then clicking Enable Recommended API. Vertex AI is a one-stop shop for all the machine learning tasks in GCP. In this exercise, we'll use the prepared data to create a Vertex AI dataset. Creating a Vertex AI dataset is an important entry point into Vertex AI. Having a dataset is a must for doing machine learning. There are many types of data available in Vertex AI, such as images, tabular, text, and video. Within each modality, there exists multiple dataset types. For example, in text, you have single label classification, multi-label classification, named entity recognition, or sentiment analysis. It can also accept data from many sources, such as a BigQuery table or a GCS bucket. In this exercise, we will upload our prepared dataset to a GCS bucket and then import into Vertex AI. The first step is to prepare and upload the data to GCS. In order to do that, we will be using Colab. The link to the code is in the description. Initially, we'll authenticate through Colab to access GCP services such as creating a bucket. We will be using the large movie review dataset by Stanford. This dataset has 25,000 training samples and 25,000 testing samples. The problem is a binary classification problem. Positive data points and the negative data points are separated in subfolders. For demonstration purpose, we will only use 2,000 training samples and 2,000 testing samples. We will store the resulting data in a separate directory called unzip underscore truncated. When importing unstructured data, Vertex AI expects a strict format. You can see the exact format in the Preparing Data web page in the Vertex AI documentation. Let's have a look at the entries we need to have in our JSON blob. We first need to have a classification annotation. So the classification annotation refers to the label of your data sample. Then you have the text content, which is the string containing the movie review. Finally, you can have a data item resource label, which says whether that data point is going to be used for training testing or validation. To enforce the format, we'll be using a library called Pydantic. Pydantic allows us to work with the required JSON format conveniently by allowing us to define a class that represents the JSON data. Pydantic gives us the ability to convert instances of the class to JSON and back to an instance seamlessly. Note that Pytantic offers sophisticated functionality, such as representing data using an alias. For example, we cannot have a Python variable named aiplatform.googleapis.com slash mluse. This has invalid characters that are not accepted in a variable name. In this case, we can set an alias and use that when converting these classes to JSON. Here, you can see a dummy example converted to a JSON using the Pydantic library. For our actual dataset, we'll be creating two lists of JSON strings, one containing all the training samples as JSON strings, and the other containing all the test samples as JSON strings. We are also going to split our test dataset into a test and validation subsets. This is done randomly. 
Note how Pydantic is making it very easy to convert Python objects to JSON blobs. To recap, now we have three datasets. The training dataset, which has 2000 examples, the validation dataset, which has roughly 1000 samples, and the test dataset, which is having roughly 1000 samples. We will write the data to two files in JSON-L format, or JSON-Lines format. JSON-Lines format is quite similar to a standard JSON file, except it contains multiple JSON blobs, separated by a new line. Next, we need to upload this data into GCS. For that, we're going to first create a GCS bucket if it doesn't exist. Since we have authenticated in Colab, we can do this via Colab. We will then upload the data into the GCS bucket. Now let's go and have a look to make sure the data is successfully uploaded. Great. Now we have a prepared dataset for Vertex AI. In the next tutorial, we'll import this data into Vertex AI and create a Vertex AI dataset.